All right, great. Well, welcome everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Stephanie Butchakowski. Um, I'm one of the uh, admissions directors in the uh, enrollment management office. So we're very glad you're here with us today. Um, today, it's basically just kind of a layout. I'm gonna introduce um, the faculty and staff that we have on hand. And they're gonna go over, of course, all about the nursing program. And then there is a chat box. So if you guys have specific questions, as things are popping up, please feel free. I'll be manning that while everyone else is talking. And then I'll kind of feel the questions when we're through with our, our pieces of um, with introducing each other. Um, I would love it if you wouldn't mind um, in the chat box, just so that we have um, confirmation of who attended today, it would be great if you could just write your name and the school that you're from so that we knew that, you know, I have kind of the, the list of everyone that attended. That'd be great. I'd appreciate it very much. Thank you. Um, so like I said, my name is Stephanie. I'm actually, I'm the nursing liaison with the admissions office. So I work um, very closely with the lovely ladies they're gonna talk with today. Um, I do the final read and, um, and, and working with another faculty member too in the nursing department on the applications. So um, I have a great hand in it. I enjoy it very much. Um, you know, the program is, is wonderful. Um, so as for now, what I'll do is I will turn it over to Dean Coyne who is going to um, just kind of give you some brief information and that um, speak to the program. So, is that Dean Coyne? Nope, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> we all do it. <laughs> Isn't that the thing we always forget? We always do. Talking? Well, everybody, um, I see uh, Sarah, Caitlin, and Chase. Is that, that's who we have here today? Um, and I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you to Niagara. And I know um, right now we're all going through some tough stuff. And uh, what I would like to share with you is our school has been very resilient through um, this past semester with COVID. And we've been very creative and very student focused. But let's go back to Niagara for a minute. Let's talk about that. Um, I am the interim dean. And as of July 15th, I will have been here a year. And I have had the honor of working with uh, tremendous faculty and uh, team Mrs. Holthouse is amazing. What I do want you to know is Niagara has a long tradition and a long history of nursing excellence. And uh, when a, a year ago, a little bit more than a year ago, when I was looking at um, coming to, to join the team, my sister said, Niagara, Niagara are the great nurses. Those are the nurses. And she remembered them. Um, she's a dietitian, and she has remembered nursing students uh, in her hospital over and over again. So we have a long tradition and a reputation of excellence in nursing. And at this time, uh, right now, we, the school it was uh, reopened. It, it closed for a short period of time. So we've been open now um, since 2006, so 14 years. We have graduated four classes, 2016, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So actually it's five classes. Uh, information that you might say, well, how are, what are your metrics? And Mrs. Holthouse and I were just talking about that. Our pass rate on the NCLEX in December, there is a cumulative number that we get and we're at 83.3%. And with the program redeveloping and building, uh, the year before it was 76, 76.5. So what we have is we are trending up, which is what you want to see. And that's what you want to, to be involved with. Um, we do have our freshman class this year is 90 students. And um, we, we work with us. I'll have Laura go through a, a bit more detail in your curriculum. We'll br we bring you on board in the science that you will be taking in the first two years, um, anatomy, physiology, a math course, statistics, uh, microbiology, these are the foundations of a nursing career. And what we have to remember is nursing is based in the sciences. And what we want to build are autonomous professional nurses, and this is a licensed program. So when you say, well, gee, what does that mean? That means that we ask permission from New York State and say, we're running a program. New York State says, okay, do you meet the requirements? We show them and they say yes. We also are accredited through the AACN and CCNE, which are the bodies that come, um, the nursing uh, leaders that come and evaluate our program. So we are actually going into that reaccreditation coming up. Uh, in our school, what you do is the first, first year, uh, freshman year, you're gonna concentrate on those sciences. 
And then in your um, sophomore year, you're going to pick up a nursing course. Now I wanna make it very clear, when you do apply to Niagara and you are accepted, you are accepted into the nursing program. You will be in the nursing program. It's not like, and, and I won't use any names, but other schools will have the students go through the first two years and you do the science, you do the math, you do your electives, and then you apply for a position in the nursing school for your junior and senior year. The anxiety that can erupt from that or can evolve from that is that, am I going to get in? So what we find is if we say right at the gate, you're in the program and it's up to you to stay in the program, that that creates, um, it creates a different learning experience for the students as well as the faculty. And it doesn't create these moments of anxiety for everybody where we say, oh, you know, um, what's going to happen now? And so we want you to understand that, that when you are in the School of Nursing, when you're accepted, you're here. Uh, what we do also is we, um, we have fa uh, faculty advisors that will work with you as well as Mrs. Holthouse, and she'll get into a bit of detail about that, but that faculty advisor works with you um, in terms of your courses. Now, there's not a lot of variability because nursing is a specific program, and again, it's licensed, so we have to meet certain criteria of what you are learning. Uh, one of the things that we also have, uh, one person that helps us is Mrs. Uh, Elizabeth Englert, who is part of our advisement team. And she's always available for students. So if there are problems or issues or concerns, or even just saying, you know, what, what am I doing? What, what do I need to do? She is always there uh, constantly. So students do get a hold of her. We like to address student issues or problems right up front. So what we, we do encourage is that if there is something, you have a question, there is always somebody available to answer it. One of the things we also, um, in the past year, I uh, worked with the faculty to reinvigorate our progression and retention committee. And that's the group that we watch as students are going through so that we can help intervene or support what's going on um, as the year goes by. Now, one of the things you might be asking and saying, okay, nice, but what about our class is going to be on campus this year? What's happening with that? I'm going to just reflect back to the past semester where um, in March, March 12th, everybody, we were informed that we had to go online. And fortunately, our faculty in the School of Nursing use the Canvas platform, which is our online platform, and they moved relatively smoothly into that, that style of teaching. Um, it's, it's different, and it certainly uh, gives some students pause, but what we have found is that we were flexible and agile enough to take our students through and, and with us. And the Progression and Retention Committee has watched and worked with the students who did have difficulty. On top of that, what we did, be because we wanted to let our students know that we were, we were in it with them, we lowered our minimum requirement from C plus to C, just so that if there was anxiety about getting, getting through the program, that we, would, that we would work with them. Coming up in the fall, our plan right now, Niagara University as a whole, is assessing our faculty and saying, okay, let's look at it in light of um, opening campus, it is our intention to have a campus open. There may be some variations in terms of how many students are on campus. Um, as far as the nursing program is going, we are also working with our faculty to see who wants to do the brick and mortar classes, who would do a hybrid, which it means if you have a Tuesday, Thursday course, you might show up on Tuesday and the other students in class would show up um, on Thursday and then you would attend class through Zoom or through some other uh, platform. We're, we're still waiting, and because it's July 7th, we have to recognize that a lot can happen between now and September or August 24th. One of the things that our campus did was that, um, oh, wait a minute, your prospective students for 2021. I'm sorry, but anyway, so here's our story. Um, so no, what we Maggie, that's actually good. You know, I think it's very important for the students to know how we are handling, you know, um, the health oh, okay. and safety and their campus. Like, so I think it's, no, it's very good that you're touching on this. All right. So it's, it's good for them to know. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> Okay. It, it can only help. It can only help. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so what I would say to you, if you're listening, if, if you're saying, well, what's going on? What we do is we focus on the student. 
Um, I've had students walk into my office and um, I, I'll share a story. One student was having a hard time with a, a care plan for her clinical rotation. And she just walked into my office and sat down, and sat down at my table and said, uh, Dean Coyne, I need help with my care plan. So I readjusted my schedule and we sat there and we worked on her care plan for the next half hour, pointed her in the right direction and moved her on. Um, so my office is open all the time to students. It, it, is, it is my responsibility to be available to you, um, to help you out and to assure that your learning experience is maximal for what you're going to, you're going to be doing. Now, a nursing licensure exam when you go through a nursing program, we cannot prepare you to be the completely experienced veteran nurse. What we are preparing you for is to pass the NCLEX exam and to enter your profession at a level that is safe practice so that you have the knowledge that you need to put your hands on another human being and to provide care and basic care. So when you look and you're going through the courses, um, you will, you'll start with basic concepts and Laura will talk about that. And then we build layer by layer. So your sophomore year, you have a little bit of that. Then you're moving to med surge um, by your sophomore junior year. These are the courses that are the meat and potatoes of what nursing is. There's psych, um, OB pediatrics, there's leadership course, and then you have electives that, um, that you can take um, that kind of round out the picture. I'm gonna watch my time because I wanna be sure that, that we get through everything and get your questions. Um, on the whole, we are continuing to build the program. We have three different types of program. We have the traditional four year, which you come in as a freshman, you go through the four years, and then you graduate. And then you take the, um, the licensing exam. We have an RN to BS program. So if you said, gee, I think I'm gonna go and I'm gonna to go to a two year program and I'm gonna get an RN and that's what might work best for me. Okay. However, in uh, December, 2017, a law was passed that nurses who have um, graduated from two year programs must get their bachelor's uh, degree within 10 years of graduating. We have that program. So if you said, oh, I'm gonna do that and, and then I'll, I'll go back and get the, my BSN. We have an RN, we call it RN to BSN and we have a coordinator who works on, works on that. So if you came back in a couple of years and said, I'm interested, we got you. The other degree we have is the accelerated program. And this is for somebody who has already achieved a bachelor's degree and it could be in anything. It could be in art history, it could be in music. Um, but you would have to take certain prerequisites, those sciences, anatomy, physiology, math, um, statistics, psychology, and then you would come in and for a year you would work uh, very intensively. It's a very intense and I will say challenging program, but in a year you would have completed that program and then you, can, you are eligible to sit for the NCLEX exam. So we have a program that looks at nursing from different levels, different places, and we work, again, I, I just wanna stress at how much we work with students. And I'm gonna hand you off to Mrs. Holthouse now, and we tease her and call her mom in the building because she's the person who uh, most students will, will zot in and ah, uh, and then she, she sets you right, makes your day right, and sets you on your way. Mrs. Holthouse, would you like to take over? Nope. You're, you're muted, Laura. You're muted. <laughs> she did it too. I'm going, now I'm going to mute. Now okay, I am. Now I'm back. And I clicked something, but it wasn't, am I still muted? No, you're good. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I, I'm loving seeing all of your faces because since March, I really have been craving the energy of the young. Um, with no one on campus, it's all just us adults and it's, it's okay, but I'm really missing the students. So it's nice to see some young faces. Um, I'm going to touch on a few things. I know you guys are in your search. I know right where you are. I've got a daughter right about your age and you're thinking, okay, I, I want nursing, but why would I choose Niagara? Why is, would Niagara be the choice for me? And I have a couple answers for that uh, question. So Niagara, the Vincentian piece of this university, and I'm going to tell you the truth. Oh, this is being recorded, isn't it? Okay, so when I first started working here, 
everyone was like so nice and so caring and I kept waiting for it to not be fake and it never happened. It's, it's real. That Vincentian piece here at this university is why you want to come here. Um, th the school is extremely student focused, um, extremely community focused and nursing plays into that, that Vincentian piece so beautifully. Um, Dean Coyne spoke about the NCLEX pass rates, and that's something that you really need to, as a nursing student, you need to research that, but you need to know all the different pieces to that puzzle. So you, you will see schools out there. Our pass rate is currently, and like Dean Coyne said, it's trending up. We, we brought our program back and we're considered a new program for a while, but we're stabilizing and trending up. Um, you're going to look, our, ours was 83% you said last year, was 83 point something percent. You're going to look at schools and you're going to see pass rates of 100% and you're going to be like, uh, what's the difference? I'm going to tell you the difference. Niagara is not a weed out school. There are schools who focus on their pass rates to the point of losing their students. So if they see a student struggling who may not pass their boards the first time, they don't stay in that program very long. So Niagara does not do that. We look at the big picture, we, which also plays into why you want your education here. I'm just gonna focus on the boards right now though. Niagara does not weed students out. So that 83% that passed, so the students graduate in May, and then June, July, we've already heard back from a bunch of our students that they've already passed their boards. It's, it's my favorite part. Um, but we start hearing back from them June, July that they've started taking their, their exams. So 83% of those students passed the exam the first time in 2019. Every single one of those students went on to pass their boards and upward of 90 to 95% of them were working as registered nurses by the beginning of the fall semester. So there's a lot of layers. Again, you need to do the research for sure, but there's a lot of layers to that onion when you're starting to look at schools and starting to kind of put this together because nursing is kind of a different option. So when you talk about, again, that student-centered um, Vincentian piece, that's another reason Dean Coyne again mentioned um, about her sister knowing Niagara nurses, Niagara nurses, Niagara nurses. Niagara nurses are very well known in this area of Western New York because you get the big picture. It's not just science and clinicals and labs. It's the big picture of caring for another person, of being an advocate for someone who may not have a voice. That's a big part of our program here. And that's what rounds out our students so that agencies in Western New York kind of seek the Niagara nurses. So I just want to throw that out there a little bit too. Um, we are a direct admit school. If you are looking at any delayed admit schools, and again, look around, you'll come back here anyway. Um, look around at these schools. When you're, if you're looking at delayed entry schools, be sure to ask them, what percentage of your nursing intendeds actually get seats in the program. That's information that's imperative to you in making your decision. The programs do what they do for different reasons. Both are good, but you need to be aware of what you're signing up for if you're looking at delayed admit programs, okay? Um, I'm gonna switch over and talk a little bit about the curriculum now. Um, as it stands, right now, it, it will probably change and tweak a little bit. As it sta stands right now, you, uh, and it will always be that you're accepted directly into the program. Right now we start our nursing classes off your very first, very first fall when you enter. I think that's gonna get pushed back a little bit just to give students a foundation, but you do get into your nursing classes very early in our program. You do get that patient contact um, that those lab skills, you get those very early. Nursing, let's face it, it's a calling for sure. I love nurses. I will do anything I can for my nurses. There is a reason I am not one. So we like our students to be um, 
out there and experiencing a little bit just in case you know they may get that you know what i thought this was a really good idea but that smells really bad and you're asking me to touch it so it, it, it still gives students a chance to maybe opt for something that might be a better fit while they still have time and haven't wasted too much time so um we do have um clinical rotations all throughout western new york we're in all the catholic health hospitals all the collida hospitals we're in ECMC, we're in OSHAI, you name it, we're in it. We're in, um, for our community health class, we're in multiple places throughout the community. We're in the um, VA, we're in the Visiting Nurses Association, we're all over. And that's beneficial for both the community and for the students because the community, the health, the healthcare agencies get a chance to see you. They get it, you get a chance to meet their nurses. Their nurses get a chance to work with you. They get a chance to get to know you, but you also get a chance to get to know the hospitals and what's available in Western New York. You may work in the Kaleida system at one of your clinical rotations and say, hey, I really, really like this. You may work in another one and say, hey, maybe this, this isn't a good fit for me. So you get to see the hospitals and the healthcare agencies and they get to see you. It works out really, really well. Um, so you'll have two med surge clinical rotations and OBPs. You'll have a community health where you're out all over throughout the community. Um, you could be in a dialysis center in the morning and a wound care center in the afternoon. Then you could be in, a, in an STD clinic all day. I mean, you're just all over the community. It's really an amazing experience. Um, and then your senior year, you do what's called a nursing internship. And what that is, is that's one-on-one, -on -one, 135 hours with a nurse preceptor. Um, you work that nurse's shift with them and you do her job under her supervision, whatever she's comfortable letting you do. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's a, I don't even know how to turn it off. So, um, the beauty of that is, is by the time you get to your last semester, you have a pretty good idea of what flavor nursing you're looking for. Do I want peds? Do I want oncology? Do I want med surge? What am I looking for? I'm not going to lie to you and say that it happens all the time, but I will tell you that eight out of 10 times we are able to place students in the genre that they're looking for so they can get a little taste of that. And I will say that a very high percentage of our students are offered jobs through the connections that they make in their internships. So it's, it's really, really a great connection for Western New York in the healthcare agency. Um, I'm going to talk to you about your time here. Um, again, student-centered. When you come to nursing school, you're learning to be an advocate for your patients. You also, no matter where you go to nursing school, the curriculum with nursing, because it's a licensed program, is extremely tight. Most of the classes you take are required classes. So there's not a super lot of wiggle room for those extras. So if that's something you want, if you might want a minor or you might want to study abroad or you might want to do some of those things, that's great. It's difficult in nursing. We can do it if you want to play a sport, whatever it is, we can do it. But you have to be, no matter where you go, you have to be very, very proactive as a nursing student. You need to voice it just as soon as you can so that your faculty advisor can work with you toward meeting those goals. You can't come up, you know, in, in the second semester of your junior year and say, hey, I want to declare a minor. It, it's kind of late then. But if you start at the beginning and we can wiggle some classes around and make room, um, those things are very possible. So be sure no matter where you go to be an advocate for yourself that way. Um, I think that's about all I have, Stephanie, if you want to take it from here. Oh, that's wonderful. No, great, great information. You guys are so thorough and enthusiastic and passionate about it. I think I'm sure the students can see it. And I mean, I certainly can feel it. So it's great. So thank you. Um, I don't see any questions, but even still, if things are popping up, there's some things I still want to share in regards to like the admission process um, and the application reviews and things like that, that are very important for you to know at this point, especially uh, with the changes that have been taking place. So because I do work so closely with the department, um, we are scheduled to have a meeting at the end of July to kind of go over things. Um, obviously testing has been canceled um, due to the COVID-19 for SATs and such. 
So we will be working on different guidelines and, and what we plan to do with that. Um, one thing I can't stress enough, just as Laura is saying about how being an advocate for yourself, also, when you do your application, do not sell yourself short. Um, we have such a holistic review of the application and we look at everything that you've done. So I cannot stress enough to put down everything that you've done, whether you have any, especially if you have any hands-on experience, please put that in. Um, letters of recommendation, very important. Of course, the sciences, when we're looking at the core classes, um, bio and chemistry, I mean, are very important. Um, Maria, um, who I work with, a faculty member in the office, to kind of you know, go over some of the applications. Um, she's very strong and loves looking at um, health, like what your health grade is. So a lot of things like that, just to keep in the back of your mind. Um, essay is also very important. If you could talk about why you want to be a nurse, um, why you see yourself doing it, all of those things play a factor. Um, but like I said, please, you know, don't sell yourself short. Make sure you always just put everything down that you've ever accomplished and um, really talking yourself up. This is the time to do that. So, you know, please make sure. And you will be assigned a specific admissions counselor who's going to personally read your application and they're going to be your constant contact as you do the application. They will reach out to you, um, following up, making sure everything's completed. If you're missing anything, they will be your main contact, you know, throughout that whole process for sure. Our application, actually our Niagara University um, freshman application just went live yesterday. So that is great news, it's early. Um, so students are able to start, if they you know, want to start applying, you know, they can do that. Obviously things like transcripts and such, you know, not be ready from high schools. Um, but you know, as you're doing a, a process like that, you, know, you can start an application and just you know, add your information you know, as, as, as kind of um, ongoing. So it's no problem at all. And in terms of deadlines and, and things like that too, um, all kind of in the works still. Um, so that's something that I think um, Dean Coy and I, Laura and um, uh, Dr. Godowski will be discussing in terms of um, possibly any kind of application deadlines and things like that, but it'll be sooner rather than later than if anything like that were to change. Uh, and like we mentioned, since it is competitive, no matter what, we always stress for you to apply early if you can. Um, we do in general work on a rolling admission basis, um, but if that does obviously change with nursing, we'll let you know that. But as this past year's, um, it has been rolling where once we do get everything, we let you know within a few weeks if you've been accepted. So we move fairly quickly. Um, so like I said, you know, getting everything in as quickly as you can will be good. And then another thing I think is important for you to know um, admission wise is, okay, we have a couple questions, but really quickly, I just wanna mention our scholarships. So when you do apply to Niagara, you are automatically qualified for merit scholarship money. Um, this is very important to know, especially for us as a private school. So we will automatically take your average and um, you know, if you do have an SAT, um, if you've taken, you know, we're able to, um, then we will look at that, of course. Um, but we have a sliding scale where we, we automatically qualify for this money. So for this past year, the range started at $10,000 and went all the way up to $23,000 a year. So this is guaranteed automatic money, has nothing to do with financial aid. It's strictly just you and what you've done. Um, that money is guaranteed for you all four years. And we let you know your scholarship amount right along with uh, an acceptance letter. So you get all of that right at the same time. Um, so nothing's really a waiting game, which is nice. Um, but so we do have a couple questions here, so I'll kind of go off uh, my topic. Um, we have a question from Caitlin who's asking, um, I'm not sure who might want to take this one, but it says, how often do Niagara students go on to get their nurse practitioner degree and how does Niagara prepare them for that? All right, I'll, I'll start with that. And um, Mrs. Holthouse, if you want to um, chime in at any point. Uh, when you are going through the four-year program, um, it, it, most often students will go on not immediately into a nurse practitioner program, but rather they will go on to, um, to do a clinical experience uh, in a hospital to get what we would call that first year med surge experience. Now, we're seeing trends in the healthcare system where there is a movement to take care of patients in their homes. So let's go back for a second to that nurse practitioner um, role. There is uh, within the profession and within the academic world and in the clinical world, there's um, constant conversation going on. And actually I participated in a conversation um, with two of our trustees uh, who are nurses yesterday. And the discussion goes something like this. 
we have an accelerated program and it is a higher percentage of our accelerated nurses go into a nurse practitioner program right out of the program. The upside of that is you're going right into a nurse practitioner program, you've learned, you've been in some clinical in your, in your program. The downside of it is you're going into a, a very dense, heavy weighted clinical educational program and you don't have um, clinical experience beyond what you had in nursing school. The general impression is, well, we need nurse practitioners, so they'll get it when they go out and actually take care of, of patients, or they'll get it in their nurse practitioner program. And there is truth to that. What we find, though, is that in the traditional group of, um, grouping of students, the more often path is get some clinical experience and then go and move on to do um, the master's degree as a nurse practitioner. It's a master's or actually it's a doctorate in um, nursing practice, DNP. Uh, so it really, it does depend on the individual. Uh, it depends, I think in some ways it does depend on the program that um, with the four year program, it's kind of stretched out. Whereas the, the accelerated program is very compressed and people tend to think I'm done, I'm moving on. Um, does that help? Does that help answer that question? I'm hoping. Okay. Is that good, Caitlin? Yes. It's Caitlin, does okay. That, does that help? And the one thing you want to remember is as you're going through the four year program, as Mrs. Holthouse said, you're going to get exposed to different types of nursing. And even beyond that, there are other careers. Um, there are careers in academia. And I'll tell you, um, my career really started in the clinical world. I spent uh, 38 years at Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center, starting as a new grad in the intensive care unit in 1979. And yes, that was 41 years ago. Um, <laughs> But when we look now and, and, and we look at the different experiences that, that are open to nurses, um, there's academia, you could say, hey, I wanna teach, or um, nurses who go into law, or nurses who will go then on and get their MBA or a leadership, a degree in leadership. So uh, it, it's, it is not um, as, as regimented as it used to be. Oh, you have to go, you have to get a clinical experience. Um, but I would say there is a benefit to doing that. Now, that being said, the VNA, which is the Visiting Nurses Association, has recognized that they can't wait a year for nurses to get through that kind of experience and say, we expect you to have a year of med surge experience. They can't wait. So what they have done, and we've been talking to them, they have put together a program that they're going to accept new grads right out of nursing school. And similar to what I experienced 40 years ago when they said, we wanna bring new grads into our ICU and grow our own critical care nurses, um, DNA is saying, you know what? We want to grow our own visiting nurses. So that would be something you would be exposed to in school. And what happens along the way is different hospitals uh, get a chance to see how students perform. And it's almost like you're working in a long-term or in that clinical setting, you're working almost like saying it's um, an interview. And um, what we did notice this past uh, spring, Niagara kept, um, we kept our students in the clinical sites a little bit longer longer than some of the other schools. And we made a decision that we worked with, um, I'll give an example, Catholic Health. Our students were not put in COVID patient rooms. We gave the students the choices. And now here we are at the point where, um, where now the hospitals are, are hiring people. Our students were present during a portion of COVID, so they're front row and center in terms of hiring. And we're finding that our students are, um, are successfully uh, being hired into jobs, um, neonatal ICU, pediatrics, med surge. So it's, it's a good feeling. That clinical time gives you that opportunity to see what you wanna do, and then gives you time to make a bigger decision. 
I won't say one way or another which is better, only you will know that as you are going through nursing, going through nursing school and say, yeah, I wanna go on for my nurse practitioner degree. If you want to, sure, you can. That's the long answer. I hope it helped. That's a great answer. <laughs> okay. You wanna say anything, Laurel? You're, you're muted. Laura, got you. There we go. <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. yes. Um, so, Caitlin, I see that your part of your question is how does Niagara prepare them to go on to those schools? So I'm going to give you a little example of, of that student-centered piece. So this year, um, when the, the whole COVID thing blew up and we were deciding how we were going to, you know, help our students through this, um, Many universities went to a uh, pass-fail option for their classes. So um, Dean Coyne was at the forefront of, you know what, nursing students usually do go on for further education, be it a master's, be it a, a nurse practitioner, be it whatever. And Dean Coyne was adamant that although we would lower from a C plus to a C, the nursing classes and classes that are looked at by those colleges that they will be applying to for those graduate programs are going to need a grade there and they're going to need a benchmark of at least a C. So that's kind of how Niagara prepares their students. We hold them to a benchmark that's going to allow them to go farther. Um, the, I would never have known that, never have put that in the puzzle, um, but Dean Coyne was very adamant that all of those classes that would be looked at required a grade. And some students really needed the pass-fail option, and once they were counseled um, about the further education piece, uh, some of them still opted to take that. But that's how Niagara prepares their students is that we're student focused and we look at the bigger picture and where the students might want to go and we make sure that they're prepared for those things. Mrs. Holthouse, you've reminded me of something and I'm going to, to add this. Um, going back to how we prepare you, when you are in your initial nursing courses, there are three pieces. There is the classroom, there is a skills lab, and then there is your clinical experience. So the classroom is the theory. We're telling you, this is the heart, this is the heartbeat, this is how, um, this is the structure of the heart. We take your anatomy and we start to put the body together. So then you go to skills lab and we say, all right, you're going to be going in and taking care of patients. So let's teach you how to do a blood pressure. Let's teach you how to put your hands on another human being, number one, without scaring them how to do it safely when you wash your hands. Let's talk about personal protective equipment, PPE, and we're all, my mask is here somewhere, well, we're all running around with masks now, and this is historically, this is a, a, a medical a piece of equipment. And we use, we, and we will, I mean, we teach students how to put on a mask. Um, this is not the way, okay? This is not the way, okay? This is the way. All right, what we have to remember is we have to use our PPE properly and that's what we teach you. We teach you how to do blood pressure. We teach you how to calculate drugs, again, math. And one of the things I'm gonna say, um, you, you might need to calculate how many micrograms per kilogram, which is the weight of the patient, per hour are you going to give this med. We teach you how to do that. The other thing that you're going to be learning in skills lab is how to do a dressing, how to put on sterile gloves and not contaminate them. These are things that prepare you for the clinical site. Then we take you into the clinical um, experience and there's a faculty member, an adjunct faculty, who is more often um, an employee of that hospital. So at Catholic Health, there is a member of their staff who has said, gee, I'd like to teach, but I wanna teach clinical and they will work with you in terms of your patient care assignments. So your first assignment, the very first day you walk into a hospital as a student nurse, your assignment is determined by that faculty member and they might have you with a partner. So you have one patient, two nursing students. Now, um, out on the floors, nurses tend to like to have nursing students because you're going to do care and you're going to free them up so that they can take care of the more complex patients. 
So in your freshman year, then your sophomore year, we start to ramp it up. You're now going to be learning more intense procedures in the skills lab. You're going to learn how to change a dressing. You're going to learn how to change a dressing on a central line or a chest tube. You're going to learn how to draw up IV medications. So we're moving. In other words, we're building that next layer. Also in the class, you're going to have more intense content. And then in the clinical area, you will be taking care of more difficult patients. You will have one patient and then we move you to two. And sometimes you'll have three patients so that you actually start to get to a feel of what a nurse who, you know, one day you're a nursing student and then the next day you graduate and a month later you're, or maybe a couple of weeks later, you're in a job and you went from three students and the charge nurse says, okay, all right, Shana, you've got six patients tonight and you have to organize the care for those patients. So what we do is we gradually build that picture so that when you get to that end, you will have organizational skills, you will understand medications, you will know how to address patients and how to work as a team member. And that's how we prepare you. Another long answer, but that's, that's the process. I mean, honestly, if, if I had the song for nursing, you guys would make me want to go back for it. I swear. <laughs> it's just, I just love it so much. It's great. Thank you so much. Such great answers. Um, <clears throat> I did have a question, um, uh, very important, um, yet, you know, general about the admission process. Um, requirements for nursing. Yes. Great question. Yes. Great question. So I will say to start off in general, um, what our general requirements are for everything, excluding nursing. Um, is roughly about 85-ish um, average cumulative from the end of your junior year. We'll always look your cumulative average from the end of your junior year. And then um, for SATs, roughly about 1020 if you have the scores, if you're able to submit them. Nursing, obviously, given the curriculum and the competitiveness of it, it is um, higher. And the ideal candidate would have uh, a 90 plus overall average cumulative from the end of junior year and over 1100 on the SAT or 24 on the ACT. Um, however, I will say that everyone has a story. You are, if you do not have those two things, it does not mean you'll not get accepted. Um, we look at everything, which is why I was saying, you know, not to slay yourself short on the application. So, I mean, if you have your heart set on nursing, if you can get some kind of practical experience, possibly, whether it's community service or anything like that, I mean, all of those things, you know, play a huge role. Um, and like I mentioned, like the letters of recommendation are very important. And we definitely look highly what you've decided to take senior year. Um, we'd like to see that you've taken a science also in senior year. Um, you know, we want to see those four years of science. So please make sure that's something um, that you keep in the back of your mind. And the chemistry, the set of chemistry, biology grades, and health grades are, are certainly taken very, very you know, highly into consideration as well. Um, but those are the general requirements, you know, but like I said, it, the holistic review, um, not everyone is going to fall into those exact numbers and we know that. Um, so we do, you know, really look at everything. Um, a possible scenario, which we may discuss when we have our meeting about how to kind of review the applications in case someone, if you don't mind me asking me taking kind of a quick um, poll here, has, has there been any SATs that here that you have been able to take or is it only PSATs for the um, interested students? Can you guys let me know? Has, anyone, has everyone taken the PSAT? Yeah. Okay, any SATs though? Or, or did, you, did you get an opportunity to take any SAT or no? I had the opportunity to take an SAT in January. Okay. So okay. Kind of cut off. Sure. Okay. And um, I live in Wisconsin, so I was able to take an ACT, but I and I took a PSAT, but I've never taken the SAT. Okay, great. Anyone else can share with kind of the same? I took the PSAT, but I did not take the SAT yet, and I'm still oh. studying for it. Okay, sure. Okay, great. Um, if, you know, what we're considering maybe depending on when students start applying or when <clears throat> the first test will be offered when the college board makes that decision, um, which I think hopefully will be, I think it's, I think they're hoping for an August date. Um, but we may even, as we're waiting on additional scores or different information from students, we may actually look at a PSAT score and just kind of as a guide. Um, on average, the students, 
falls within like a 20 to 30 point range of how they did on the PSAT and how they do on the SAT. So it's a fairly good guide. Um, so that's something that might be a consideration as well. So just to kind of, um, so you guys are kind of aware of that. And, you know, just staying in touch. One thing I like to point out too, is something called demonstrated interest. Um, it's something that we really look at with our interested students that are coming in. So we are hosting tons of virtual events, you know, including this today, which has been a huge success, um, but also many others, whether it be about student life, um, financial aid, um, admissions in general, um, general open houses, all of that kind of stuff. So the more that we see your engagement, the more we know, I mean, how, how much you're looking at Niagara and how much we should be considering you um, and your, you know, that your interest level with us how engaged you are with like our correspondence with emails we send, um, all that kind of stuff. So it's a huge factor. So if you're able to attend virtual events, um, if your school by chance welcomes us into your offices, which we would love to happen, but we're not sure it'll be for the fall, because um, we will, we're all assigned certain areas in the admissions office in certain high schools. So we will be, an admissions counselor will be visiting your high school, um, whether it be virtually or in person. Um, to go over kind of admissions, you know, um, protocol and the whole thing and everything like that. So um, if you can attend any of those things, we highly, highly recommend it. Um, but does anyone have, there's nothing in the chat box right now, but in going over that, um, is there any other additional questions you can think of? Um, or anything else that Dean Coyne or Laura you want to add before we, we kind of start wrapping things up? We have a few more minutes. So anything else? Um, I just Okay, go ahead. I'm going to add a last statement, but go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, who is talking? I think Laura, you were? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I want to add just one thing. And, and um, Laura and um, Mrs. Holthaus and, and, um, and uh, Stephanie, I, mean, I know that this is a, a point that is very important to me, and I believe it is port important to nursing. Um, I, whether or not you have ever seen this or looked it up, I would ask you to go um, tonight and Google. Um, Laura, are you going to say this? You're going to say this. Yes. <laughs> I want you to Google the Gallup poll, um, which is taken every December, and it is the most trusted profession. And what you will find is since 1998-99 when they started this, and they run the poll in December, and every year, Nursing has been at, at the top as the most trusted profession. And that is a bond with society. That is a professional bond that um, what I find as a nurse, and I, anybody who's a nurse will know this, that when somebody is sick, a friend, a cousin, whatever, the nurse gets the call and it's, my sister has about, what do you think? Could you talk to her? Um, at 85% approval rating of Joe in the street and a Gallup poll, they go out on the street and they just randomly ask people, it's the most trusted profession. The only year nursing was not the top um, most trusted profession was 2001. And that was after 9-11 in New York City and it was firemen. But the following year, nursing went right back to the top. So that is a sacred bond between a profession and a people. And it is a very important thing to think about and to understand how trusted we are and what that trust is coming from a nursing school that we are educating nurses. We are educating you to go out there to continue that trust with the population. It's a very powerful statement and it really, um, it drives me uh, just in saying we have to be the best that we can be. So, Mrs. Holthouse, did I cover that enough, or did you want to add something? Okay. I, I knew you were going to get it in there, Maggie. She I said, was hoping you were going to. I was hoping you were. <laughs> yeah, she always gives that one, and it's something to be proud of, and it's something to be proud of going into that field. I just want to let you know that if you go on the main Niagara University website, and in the search bar, you, you hit School of Nursing, um, everything's on that page. And my contact information is in there. I would give you my card if you were here, which I wish you could be. Um, but my contact information is on there, my email address and my phone number. So please, please, please 
as you as you start researching this and start looking at schools, you're going to have questions. So by all means, please reach out to me, even if it's not Niagara related, but just nursing school. Hey, I looked at this school and it was a little different. Do you have any information? If I don't have the answer, I most certainly know who does because she's in that office right there. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of the easiest to get in touch with. So again, please, no matter what it is, just reach out and we will get you the answers that you're looking for as you go forward. Absolutely, thank you. And we did have one last question. Um, someone did ask, you know, if they should apply if they have not taken the SAT or ACT, and my answer is definitely yes. Um, we cannot penalize, given what happened, um, <laughs> against you for, you know, and, and not the ability to apply. So like I said, we are gonna put guidelines in place where we're gonna be able to, you know, um, have the metrics for the students coming in. So yes, please, um, there's gonna be a number of you with that situation. So absolutely, you can still do that for sure. Okay, great. Well, I hope everyone found this as informative, even as I still do every time. So thank you everyone for joining us today. I mean, Laura and Dean Coyne, you guys are always awesome. And really, ladies, as things come up and you have any questions, you're, like I said, you're gonna be assigned an admissions counselor. Myself, like I said, I'm the main contact too between admissions and nursing. Um, please, please, I'm, you can find me on the website as well. So just reach out and just good luck in your search. We know yeah. that it's not how it's intended to be, but we are gonna, definitely be the school that gets you the proper information that you need and makes you feel comfortable in the process and, and getting it out to you as quickly and as simply as possible so it doesn't overwhelm you or confuse you. So just keep that in mind um, and we'll definitely be that school for you. I, I can promise you that. So thanks for being here. All right, bye-bye everybody. Good luck. Bye, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Take care.